talking today to Laura Chernovitz, who is Associate Professor at the Centre for Higher Education Development at the University of Cape Town, and she's leading an initiative called the Open UCT Initiative. Laura, what's, what's this initiative setting out to do? It is a um, multiply, multiple layered initiative that has a technical component which will allow us to share whichever scholarly resources academics want to and are able to share online. Um, so things as various as sort of papers and papers, books. Papers, technical reports, um, talks, lectures, PowerPoint presentations, animations, um, simulations, the lot. So it's like an online library depository? It is a kind of a repository, but it is not a centralized repository. It's a, a, a multi-layered, um, technically quite complicated uh, mechanism. But despite the technical complications, the real challenge is actually around the cultural changes and engagement and that's the real issue is to engage academics who are rewarded for behaving in very particular ways when it comes to sharing scholarly outputs mostly in the south african context to publish journal articles in isi journals and you've recently conducted an exercise um, looking at how journals can be found through googling them Describe to me the implications of that exercise. Right. So the the interesting thing about this this activity of engaging academics is that although they are required to behave in certain ways, many very bright people work in universities because they want to make a difference and they want people to read their work and they actually want that above all else. They want that above making money. They want that above. Uh, status is actually tied up with visibility and engagement. And so one of the things that we've done recently to really demonstrate to academics how poorly or well their, um, their resources are visible is I, um, I asked a number of colleagues in various parts of the world, ranging from Latin America to Thailand to Canada to Australia and various parts of Africa to do a Google search for me on poverty alleviation in South Africa because there is a great deal of work being done at my university and at many South African universities obviously on issues of poverty and inequality and the reason that most academics do that is because they genuinely want to make a difference to improve society and the results were intriguing because first of all they varied depending on the country and the history of the searcher, mm. which I think is something people don't realize. Um, and secondly, a number, in fact, I would say many or most excellent resources were not appearing in the first 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, top hits. Mm. Um, and this so they were invisible? To they you. were invisible. And so yeah. this has proved a very effective way of engaging with people about what it takes to ensure visibility and why that matters. Because we know that people in the development sector are using Google to look for resources and to access information just the same as everyone else. It's no longer something that happens in the academy. And you discovered that Wikipedia was fairly widely used by... Right. So, of course, we all... We all have to say that we disapprove of Wikipedia in the academy and we forbid our students for you from using Wikipedia. But in fact, Wikipedia is the fifth most um, used website in the world. And it is the number one hit on a Google search, unanimously, no matter where, no matter who. And when I have spoken to academics about this finding, they all agree that in fact it is the first place to go. Often. Um, to lead to uh, references and, and further sources. However, Wikipedia is not, does not come up under Google Scholar hits at all. Mm. Why do you think that is? Well, I think Google Scholar has got some kind of algorithm that just, just has decided that that's not a scholarly output. However, we know that people use it. Right. And certainly, uh, people outside the university don't necessarily distinguish between Google and Google Scholar. Yeah. And how would you distinguish between Google and Google Scholar? 
Uh, I think that the, the Google hits, the Google Scholar tends to be what would be described as formal outputs, you know, periodic yeah, articles academic and output. Uh, book chapters and yeah. Google Books. Yeah. Once you've got this repository and you have an open and transparent approach to information and, and resources in university, what's, what's going to be different about universities as a result of this? Well, I think that what will happen is that it will, no, it will not simply be the formal outputs that will be uh, made visible. I think that the whole process of doing research and cultural production will be made visible from a much earlier stage. So the tendency now is to assume you have a question, a literature review, a data collection process, a data analysis process, and eventually you have an output and you share that. Now what's become possible is that every step of that process can be shared, commented on, and made visible. And of course that has... Including methodology as well as data. Methodology, data, um, conceptualization. Mm. And that's both exciting and advantageous and terrifying mm. because it means that uh, much of what is hidden and shoddy yes. becomes available and transparent, and, but it makes for a more honest process. And how do your academics react to the idea that they might do this? Mixed. The scientists tend to see the value much more quickly. Yeah. They tend to demand access to data and to methodologies. Mm. They, they are much more interested in, in immediacy and speed. Yeah. Um, for obvious reasons, the academics in the humanities are more concerned about matters of confidentiality, etc. Yeah. Um, but also, interestingly, even the the most competent and confident of academics are anxious about being out there and are worried about not being good enough, yeah. um, which intrigues me because of the fact that they are, they are sharing in the classroom and yet there's something different about sharing online. Yeah. And that frightens them. Much more public. Much more public. And exposed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And lastly, you were talking to me about um, an initiative within the university called Knowledge Co-op. Right. Describe how that works. That's a very interesting initiative because what it's trying to do is put the agency for research in the hands of community organizations. And those organizations would identify a research problem hmm. and the knowledge co-op's role is to find an academic or a postgraduate student who will resolve that yeah. that issue it's a i think it's got i think it's an excellent initiative it comes with challenges not least of which is the the requirement for the output to be in a particular form for academic hmm. purposes which is, of course, not the form that the community who asked for the issue yeah. would want. So it, it does mean that there are issues of genre and output and what's, what's valued. But very crudely, they, they don't want to be reading a PhD, do they? They no. want a, a simpler and easier to assimilate version. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Laura, thanks for talking to me today.